This video contains commentary. What is good, my little dudes? Welcome back to Storytime with your favorite Reddit fairy. My name is Lorna, and today we're getting into some r slash malicious compliance. It's been about two weeks, I think, since I've covered some malicious compliance, and uh, I've seen in the comments you guys have wanted it for a little bit. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Dealt with a lying landlord by threatening to run up their bills. Posted by user Fishta. I had a landlord in the past who slipped a 90-day notice requirement into the rental contract after I had signed it. I was house hunting, so at the end of my lease, I asked to go a month-to-month -month lease to make it easier to leave when the time came. Landlord and I agreed on a higher monthly price to compensate for them for the lack of security, and I signed the contract at the office of the business that they also own downstairs. Landlord wasn't actually present, but one of their employees handled it. So contract is signed and they go to make me a copy for my records, but are having issues with the copier. After a few minutes, they ask if they can text me and they get it to work. I naively agree and head upstairs. 30 minutes or so later, they text me saying that they got their copier to work and I can come and pick up my copy. I didn't think to double check everything at the time. So, for the next few months, I just pay my monthly rent while I look for a home. Finally, found the right place, and the closing date was about four weeks out, so I immediately notified my landlord that I would be leaving on said date. Landlord responds that it's nice I found a home, but I would be responsible for the next two months' rent after that as well as due to the 90-day notification requirement in the contract. I'm totally confused, so I go check my copy of the contract and sure enough, there is a stipulation in there about that. I also notice that my initials from the top and bottom of each page, verifying that I have read that page, have somehow mysteriously shifted to being doubled up at the top of the page after this stipulation, with none on the bottom of that actual page. This was because they had inserted two lines of text detailing the 90-day reporting requirement after I had already signed the paperwork. They didn't notice the formatting error it created, which was a dead giveaway of what was going on. I informed the landlord of this and notify them that it is not legally binding contract due to this issue, and state that I will not be paying any further rent beyond this month, and expect my deposit back without penalty. Unfortunately, he persists with stating that this is a legally binding contract and he will pursue it in court in addition to withholding my deposit if I fail to pay. Blah blah blah. I know I am legally in the right, but I don't want to have to deal with courts to settle it as it takes forever, so I come up with an alternative plan. The one thing he hadn't thought about was the fact that the contract included all utilities, as the unit didn't have separate meters and did not have any language forbidding excessive use of them. It just so happened to be a particularly cold winter, so I informed my landlord that if he wanted to persist with his demands, I would be inclined to leave all of the windows open, crank the heat as high as it would go, open the refrigerator door, run the water 24-7, etc., and if he entered the apartment without my permission to turn any of these items off, I would report him to the police. I got confirmation that he would not pursue the extra month's rent or security deposit within 20 minutes. Edit. Just so everyone knows how the story ended. This happened around December of 2016, if I remember correctly, and I did get my security deposit back, etc. Didn't pursue legal option because I didn't think it would end up being worth the time and trouble, though I understand the sentiment. Oh my god, there's some shady fucking landlords, my dudes. I, I actually had one. Um, in I lived in this condo, and this woman... This was just after I found out, it was around Christmas time, that my, my granddad had passed away. And then I get a letter in the mail from her saying that I'm being evicted and I have um, until, I can't remember what it was, like February or something, February to move out, February 1st. But the thing is, is she didn't follow the laws properly and because of the way it worked in my area they had to from the date posted on the letter that if you paid rent at the first of the month then you had that whole month to move out until the next month so she said february 1st but the letter i think i can't even remember the way it worked i have such a shitty memory but I just know, I just remember that it was, she didn't follow the rule, the laws, and I had it extended and told her, sorry, you can't do this, um, 
you have to give me more time. Like, this is in the middle of winter, too. Like, I need, you know, to... It's not that easy to move shit in the middle of winter. You're kind of uprooting my, my life right now. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it easy on you. So I had an inkling that she just wanted to sell the condo because she gave the reasoning that she was going to move in. And I, she was like, I'm going through a divorce and me and my husband are separating, blah, 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 and I need somewhere to live. It's like, wait a minute, if you're divorcing, why can't you keep the house or like what what's going on there why don't you sell the house and move into another one but the thing is is i found out she moved into the condo and she moved out or she sold it very shortly after which is illegal here if if it's within a certain time frame of you evicting someone that's considered illegal you can't do that i can't remember exactly what the the stipulation is how many days it is i think it's like i think it's like six months or something don't quote me, I'm not really 100% sure, but I just know that it was super shady. So there are landlords out there that do shit like this and it's bullshit. But she was like acting like a really cool person at first. But later it was just harassment. It was awful. Anyway, let's get into the next story because uh, I know I'm going to have those haters that are thumbs downing me because they're like, too much commentary. <laughs> All right, let's get into the next one. You fax into me? Posted by user Wodaji. Back before cell phone robocalls was the era of fax machine spammers. My office would receive several faxes a day from office supply businesses. Phone calls requesting them to stop did nothing. Aside from the waste of paper and ink, these spam faxes came during the busiest part of our day, when our customers faxed in their delivery expectations for the next business day. Each of their faxes had their business header at the top, followed by fill out completely, then supplies to choose from and a number to fax the form back. I told my secretary to take a black marker, circle, fill out completely, color in the rest of the page, and fax back five times each time we received their order form. The fax has stopped that week. <laughs> oh, it's delightfully intelligent. It's just simple, yet elegant i just i love it <laughs> that's great uh, at my last job but when i worked in the in the tech side of things the, we would usually get maybe one fax a day and we would take like you know play bets on where it was going to be from it was usually like something like consolidate your debts uh build your will and testament or what was the other one um I don't remember what the other one was, but it was like one of these four things, actually, I don't remember the other two. It was one of these four things that would always come in and we would just take bets on whoever would get it right. We never did it to win anything. It was just, you know, for bragging rights, I guess, for, you know, 30 seconds. <laughs> just something to get you through the day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, my dudes, I'm going to get into the next story. But before I do, don't forget to smash that like button. Let's see if we can get to 100 likes on this video. If we can, I will do a happy dance. You probably won't see it, but I'll be doing it, just so you know. And you can have that visual in your head. <laughs> All right, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for future videos just like this. And let's get into the next story. How I got a teacher to write 100 lines for me. Cross post from r slash school stories. Posted by user edale1. Okay, quick preface. I'm in my 30s. I went to high school in the 90s, and schools had a very different climate back then. I recently recalled this and thought I'd share it and hopefully give other people a laugh. Realized it fit better here than r slash school stories right after posting it there, lol. Quick background info. I was in special ed. Not from any disability, but due to extreme hyperactivity. And I mean extreme. Though I was pretty much over the hyperactivity by the time I hit high school, it's not easy to get out of special ed. By this point, though, I was in 100% regular classes and just had one class a day instead of a study hall with a special ed teacher who was basically there to help me if I needed any help with any of my schoolwork. Because I was in special ed, I had what was called an IEP. No idea what it's an actual acronym for, which was basically just a list of learning aids I could use if I needed them. Things like extended time on tests. I never actually used any of them, but I always had the option. One day, another kid did something. I got blamed and sent to detention. Now, like I said, I was a hyperactive kid and ended up getting detention in school a lot. But I was also very headstrong. 
If I felt that I had done something wrong, I'd accept whatever punishment without complaint, which, to be fair, happened pretty frequently, lol. But if I felt I was being punished unjustly, well, I usually ended up raising enough stink to warrant a real punishment, lol. So I get into tension with a teacher I've never seen before, and for the first time in my life I had a teacher tell me to write lines, a punishment which I thought had died in the 70s. Remember those aids I had access to but never used? So I say, okay, I just need to use computer transcription from my IEP so I'll do the lines on the computer. I proceeded to type out the line once, copy it, paste it 100 times, look over at the teacher and say, done. I was a fast typer back then, 130 words per minute fast. You'd be surprised what hyperactivity can be channeled into. So this was all of 20 seconds after I sat down at the computer. Teacher wasn't exactly happy with that, refused to accept it, and told me I'd have to do it by hand. She wouldn't let me use the computer for this. Now, understand, a teacher could decide to not accept one item from an IEP for a given assignment, within reason and with cause, but they cannot, by law, deny multiple things meant to address the same issue. In my case, I had, okay, have barely legible handwriting, so I had multiple options to allow me to not handwrite my assignments. If requested, they have to make accommodations for said aids. Me. Okay, I'll use dictation from my IEP then. Teacher. Meaning? Me. I say the line verbally and a staff member writes it down for me, and it looks like you're the only staff member here. And that's how I got a teacher to write 100 lines for me. I actually have to give it to her for sticking it out and writing all 100 lines rather than dropping the assignment entirely, lol. Edit. I'm seeing a lot of arguing in the comments about IEPs and when and how you get them and for what. I would just like to remind people that this was in the 90s and things were very different back then to compared to how they are now. <laughs> um, so IEP stands for Individualized Education Program, according to Google. Death Cookie Monster has pointed out to us. Thank you very much, Death Cookie Monster. <laughs> um, but that's kind of like if he knows that he's doing something wrong, like if he deserved the punishment... He says he always takes the punishment if he deserved it. So I'm guessing he didn't think he deserved this punishment. And that's why he's taking advantage of his things that he clearly said he didn't need. <laughs> um, but, you know, nothing against OP, but it's kind of petty, you gotta admit. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a petty petty revenge i guess but it's not the person that no it's not it's not petty revenge because it's not the initial person that caused him to be there in the first place i guess so but maybe it is for her asking him to do something so ridiculous that died in the 70s you never know i don't know what do you guys think let me know in the comments hey guys guess what i reached over 100 no sorry 100 yes definitely over 100 over 600 subscribers when i woke up this morning there were 602 subscribers so thank you guys very much it's it's been only i think a week or so maybe a day or two more than a week since i reached 500 subscribers so things are growing pretty quickly my dude so thank you whoever's been sharing i'm pretty sure i seen head of specter has shared some of my videos thank you very much um i appreciate everything i appreciate your views i appreciate all your comments it's so nice to see everybody like is there's still good people out there like you guys remind me that every day so thank you so much let's get into the next story Teaching a kid why he should not annoy retail workers. Posted by user Space Falcons. Not as grand as your usual malicious compliance stories, but I still think about it every now and then as it makes me feel smug inside. This happened about a year or two ago when I was still studying engineering. Decided physics was more my style. I used to work in retail earning money on the side during my studies. It was a pop-up place in the middle of the mall where we sold expensive premium alcohols and vodkas with custom-shaped bottles. It was a fancy establishment. It was fun to work at as we could put our own designs on bottles to make them look arty. One of the things we also allowed was tastes, up to around three or four samples. This becomes quite important. Usually, customers would say that they wanted to taste because, of course. One day, a group of teens who acted and looked more like preteens came up to us making all the witty remarks that lacked wit that only kids could come up with. They asked to have a sample, but none were either legal or had ID. 
continuing to try and get me to make them a quick sample. When I wouldn't budge, they left and grabbed a friend who was legal. With his friend snickering, I informed the kid he can have a sample, and he says, I'll take anything. Cue malicious compliance. I grab a sample cup and escort them to the side that had the liquors. Now, we had coconut rum liquor, absinthe and such, but we had one particular liquor that was designed for cocktails. Curaco. It was a deep blue, almost sapphire color. Looked beautiful in bottles. I poured the kid a nice sized sample of it. Now, anyone who has tasted Curaco can tell you how aggressive and bitter and citrusy the flavor is. This kid shoots it back and recoils at the sudden taste, and pretty sure his friends finally catch a whiff of the smell. He hands the sample glass back to me, and they walk away quietly. And if I'm honest, moments like these are why I miss retail. <laughs> that, I, you know what? I used to go to this place in my, like, bar hopping days. Oh, God, those days are so far gone. <laughs> but, um, there's this one bar that made a drink with blue crow. Curaco, Curaco, I don't really know how to pronounce that goddamn word, <laughs> but um, they used that in quite a few of their drinks, and one of them was called a violent fuck, and that was like, it tasted like a Slurpee, and it was like, like I don't even know what flavor Slurpee it tasted like. There was a bit of grape, it tasted a bit of grape. I don't even remember. It's so long ago, but it was delicious, and it would get you fucked up. <laughs> Just saying, but it was so good. I swear to God, it just, it, it's horrible by itself. It's just so horrible, but you mix it in with some fruit juice or uh, like 5,000 different anything, really. It just tastes so much better. Um, kids, if there's any kids, there shouldn't be any kids watching my videos. Please, fuck no. But if there are, do not drink. You're too young. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, I think, um, do I have one more story? No, I got two more. Okay, so this is the last of the top five stories of the week. And then I've got one that's like a brand new one. So this is the, the story number five is called No Promotion Equals Less Work, Same Pay. Posted by user GRRODON2. I work for a passenger boat company. We have three tasks while on board. Secure the boats for embarking and disembarking. Keep an eye out for safety and order, and check tickets and issue fines. A few years ago, the company asked some of the major staff to temporarily switch to ticket inspector for high season, with the promise to move permanently within a year. Inspectors get a higher pay, and they only do one task, which is checking tickets and issue fines, a thing that we are already required to do. So many of us say yes, gladly. At the end of the season, our reps contact us and say that we have performed well, so the company is having an examination for our promotion. We say we were assured we would be promoted no matter what. Meanwhile, there's a batch of recent hires who have personal ties with the union and higher-ups. They aren't very happy with their working conditions. It's a rather tough job, especially in the winter or in bad weather. And they often find ways to be dispensed from service or apply for desk jobs and easily obtain them, then even unnecessary or redundant. Now, we don't have much choice, so we agree to the exam. And surprise, surprise, pretty much nobody makes the cut. They had to promote two because they knew they got a perfect score, despite the exam being for a job that some of us have been doing for decades. At this point, the company has no choice but to look for qualified people among the more recent hires. And wouldn't you know, pretty much all of those who belong to that category immediately pass. Now, the key detail. After we were failed, we were notified with a letter saying we were unfit for duties of ticket inspector. The malicious compliance? We took those words to the letter and we stopped performing the tasks of ticket inspectors, which had been part of our job for years. Either we are fit for a job or we are unfit. We brought our letter with us and the first few times supervisors tried to write us up for failing to check the tickets, we promptly produced our very much official dispensation. Not only this decreased our workload immensely, letting us breeze through even the tougher shifts with ease, and generally turning our job into quite a pleasant one, but it cost the company a pretty buck in terms of lost revenue, the fines we don't issue, the greater pay gap that had to be filled by using juniors instead of seniors, and the rehiring and retraining of those who still drop out of that job because it's still outdoor work, and some people who they hire just weren't suited for it. 
Now, the supervisors don't even bother with us anymore, and I have that rejection letter in a box with other dear memories, like my old D&D character sheets. Edit. I forgot the cherry on top. A couple of months later, their timetable was modified, having them take service at 5 a.m. twice a week. There's no way I could have kept that up. I worked late nights for most of my career. Dodged that bullet. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, that's right. If you say he's unfit for it, you don't want to promote him. This is what was happening at my last job, too. They would promote new people that I constantly had to help on a daily, like, a daily basis. These, these people could not function their like do their job without asking a single person for help during their shift not once and these people got promoted they're coming to me for help and getting promoted over me how the fuck does that make sense so i totally feel op on this one that's bullshit that is bullshit that you should not have to deal with and i like the way he dealt with that that is very good <laughs> all right my dudes let's get into the last story of the day and this one is called Watching Traffic Lights, posted by user Mike underscore Carmen. I got a short story for this thread after listening to so many on YouTube. Smiley face. I was taking driving lessons with this very annoying driving instructor. He would always suggest dumb corrections to my driving, which, of course, wasn't good yet, but not as bad as he made it seem. When approaching a green traffic light with the car, I would, as any driver does, only check the traffic light until about 20 meters distance to it. Then I would just simply assume I was good to go. Even if it changed to yellow at this point, I would still make it past it without turning red. Then, one lesson, my driving instructor suddenly tells me that I should always keep an eye on the traffic light until I've completely passed it. And that was just one too many stupid corrections. The next time I approached a green traffic light, I did as asked. I watched the light, and lo and behold, the traffic light switched to yellow right as I passed it. I punched the brakes, and we got to a stop in the middle of the intersection. My driving instructor panicked and told me to continue driving. He didn't correct me again during that lesson, and I changed instructors that very afternoon. Edit. Just a few clarifications, since there seems to be confusion. 1. When I drive with 50 kilometers an hour through an intersection with no cars in front of me or a safety distance ahead, I watch the traffic light until I'm about 20 meters in front of it. If it's still green by then, I can safely pass the intersection without the traffic light turning red during my passing, and even if the light turned yellow, there would be no way I could come to a complete halt in front of the white line with that speed. Number two, it wasn't dangerous. I know that traffic light. As I passed, it was yellow, so it took another two seconds for it to turn red. By that time, I was standing on the intersection. Then it took at least three seconds until the other cars got their yellow light to start driving through the intersection. By that time, I was already driving again. I knew I wasn't getting anyone into a dangerous situation. Otherwise, I would never have done that. Number three. There is no information gained by seeing a traffic light turn yellow as one passes it. I'd rather turn my attention to the traffic ahead. Seems safer to me, shrug. For number four, my driving instructor was not a nice man. His made up rules made me even more nervous than needed. And he had a way to annoy me a lot with his weird instructions. And they were weird. I got another driving instructor after him who said I was driving fine. I completed my lesson and the exam within a few weeks. I've had my license for about 10 and a half years now, and I've never had an accident or even a ticket, so I'm not driving irresponsibly. I was just maliciously complying to show him what it would mean if any person would follow his instructions. <laughs> this is only 62% upvoted. Um, he's gonna get one for me, don't worry. Um, but, like, that doesn't make any- that doesn't make any freaking sense. Okay, I am a victim of this as well. I failed my driver's test- I think twice because I got the same woman twice and she was such a fucking bitch. I like legit, legit wanted to just slam on my brakes so she would have to like spring forward and maybe smack her head on the dashboard or something. But I didn't do that, obviously. But I thought about it. I thought about it. She failed me on some dumb fucking shit. Like, um, apparently when you're merging onto an expressway, this is a highway going 100 kilometers an hour. Um, if nobody's letting you in, if there's absolutely no space, like, everybody's ass to ass to ass to ass, like a human centipede down the fucking highway, you're expected to just force your way in there. She failed me because I had no room to get in. 
So I had to take the exit to the next exit. I didn't get on, like, come on. How is that my fault? I have my blinker on. There's nobody's moving over. What am I supposed to do? Ram into them like it's fucking bumper cars? No, you dumb bitch. <laughs> but I'm the same as OP. I've never had a speeding ticket. I've never caused an accident. I've been, I've been rear-ended before while I was stopped at a full red light. So never my fault accidents um yeah i have a clean driving record so this bitch just had something out for me i think i think she just was jealous of maybe the car that i showed up in I, i'm pretty sure i took my driver's test in a really nice monte carlo was it a monte carlo i don't remember anyway it was a nice classic i'm pretty sure i know i practiced in it but i don't remember if i took the test in it i don't know anyway that's the end of the video my dudes i hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for sticking it out to the end if you did Enjoy this little clip here I'm about to add in here. This is a little blooper, you guys. Just a little taste of the bloopers that might be coming your way. Um, I tried, I started to uh, record one of the stories and my cat decided he wanted to, to read out the story as well. So here's that little blooper. Enjoy. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications for future videos just like this one. And as always, the links to these stories will be in the description. So head on over to Reddit and show those posers some love with some upvotes. You know they deserve it. And don't forget to submit your stories. I guarantee there will be a sub subscriber submitted stories episode next Sunday. Stay tuned for that. And uh, without further ado, here is Mr. Rocksteady Meowboa. Peace out, my dudes. Really? You think so? But why? Really? No. You don't say. And then what? Oh, then he's gonna lick his butt, all right. <laughs>